Hey there, welcome back. My name's Bruce and in this one, I'm gonna be adding a bunch of accessories to my workbench. I built this workbench last year and this nice leg vise. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link to them below. I'm gonna be drilling some dog holes in this so that I can do more hand tool work. Uh, just adding a lot of things like casters so it can be moved around. Um, but let me show you what all we're gonna get into. Thanks to Rockler for sponsoring this project. They have all kinds of accessories for your workbench, so definitely check all those out, including these XL silicone project mats, and I'll show you a little bit more about those later. Be sure to check the links below, and thanks, Rockler. First up is to drill a bunch of dog holes in this thing. So I'm thinking I'm going with a row right here in the front as well as a row down the back, and then I will have some in the middle that will be other points of contact for things to hold work down. But um, I'm gonna start laying out some of these and then I'll get to drilling. I wanna show you a little bit about this drill guide that Rockler sent me. To start off, the way that you ra uh, raise and lower this, you loosen this thumb screw and that way this goes up and down to be able to drill. Say I wanted to only drill that deep, I can loosen some of these and these are stop collars. You just bring them up to where the bottom of that is and that way as you're drilling, it stops there and you're not gonna go any lower than that. You hook your, you hook your drill up to this, like this, and that way it's ready. Uh, this thing has its own chuck key that then you secure your bit in here just like you would a drill press, and this can actually just store off to the side like that, and it's ready. Another cool feature, set pins here that store away on the top, they actually help by you can attach them to the bottom here into these little slots. If you have a piece of material that you want to drill into the center of, you would clamp your material down and then you would set this on top of it. And as long as you take this and bump where both of those pins are making contact, your drill bit is gonna be in the center of where you're needing to drill. You know, drilling something on a round piece of material can be a little bit sketchy if you don't hold it the right way, but this thing actually has these Vs here that can hold material that then, you know, you could clamp that and that would allow you to drill, obviously not with this bit, but right into the center of that. Hey guys, let me take just a minute to interrupt you and tell you about my Patreon. I have launched a Patreon and I would love to have your support over there. I've got some different tiers of some cool things that you can get for supporting me. Uh, it will help me keep making videos like this and I really appreciate it. If you wanna check that out, it's patreon.com slash Bruce A. Ulrich. Head over there, I'll leave a link below. Let's get back to the project. bit I have been using is this Forstner bit. I put it in my drill and as you can see, it won't even reach all the way through this workbench. So I'm gonna have to switch to a paddle bit that I have that's the same size and it will just barely reach through to the end of that. So this is what I'm gonna use to make the through hole. Fast. 
I've marked out four spots to drill holes on these legs. I don't have a sliding dead man. It's used to help you to assist your leg vise. If I have something really long in my leg vise, I don't want only the pressure in the leg vise, so I can actually rest it on a hold fast or something sitting in these holes so that I have multiple points of contact. I've got a chamfer bit in my trim router here. I'm going to put a slight chamfer on the top edge of each one of these holes. What that's gonna do is prevent the top from kind of blowing out and splintering. I don't want a very heavy chamfer, so I'm starting with it very light, and I'll evaluate that and then see if I need to go a little heavier. I've got all of the dog holes drilled at this point, and I was testing it out with my hold fast, and it's not holding very well at all. And after doing a little bit of reading and research, talking to a couple friends who know, know more about hand tools than I do, this is too thick for this to work. And here's the reason why. Basically, the way this works is as you hammer it in here, it it cocks this thing sideways and wedges it in that hole. If it's too thick, it won't move enough to actually wedge it. So, because my workbench is this thick, what I'm going to have to do is, I need to reduce this, most people say between two and two and a half inches. I need to reduce this thickness, you know, this is almost four inches. So I'm gonna come from underneath and counter bore a little bit larger size drill bit hole up through there until I get to that depth so that these will work. Okay, I was testing this out with these uh, counterboard holes. I did two of them and I still was not getting a great hold. And what I'm finding is as this thing comes in and you hit it, it wants to turn down. That's how it wedges in the hole. This one's almost hitting right here. And this one actually was hitting the edge of the hole. So that tells me I need a little bit more clearance on the bottom side of this, so I'm gonna get a larger bit. I've remade my guide block, and I'm just gonna expand that hole out a little bit so that there's not a chance of it getting. I'm down here on the floor, and that's because I flipped the workbench upside down. This is really gonna help me drill all of these holes out. I've got 40 of them to do and I've got to counter bore the underside of all of these. I didn't want to fight gravity and have all that stuff falling in my face. So I'm going to get busy drilling out all of these holes using this guide block. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that soon. So what I'm doing is taking one of these simple uh, circle template guides and I'm just eyeballing it around this hole because the, the counter bore does not have to be exact. Uh, if you don't have one of those drill guides, to uh, kind of low tech your way through this. I am tired. <laughs> that wore me out. Look at the, look at the mess. <sighs> so I got them all drilled out and it worked really well. Let me show you down closer to the holes. 
I still ended up using the little jig that I made, which just had the oversized hole in it. And you saw how I had marked out here. Then I lined that up with it and drove these two screws in. And that would give enough of a pilot hole that I could run the drill through there to start enough that then when I pulled this out, I could plunge it the rest of the way. I got these caster and caster plates from Rockler and they're pretty cool because you install these things to your actual workbench. This is a stop collar for it. And once you do that, then the casters can just slide in like that and you can kick them down to, to move your bench around and then kick these back up to where the wheel is not holding it. So one problem I ran into is the bolts that they shipped with are only meant for three quarter inch material. That's not gonna cut it on four inch legs. And these sit flush so that you saw that sliding operation is not hindered. What I did is ran out and picked up some wood screws that have a similar taper. These happen to be the number 14 by two and a half inch. Now it is time to stitch some sleeves to go on these hold fast. The basic concept is it goes like this and it'll have stitching on each side. That will just protect the pieces as I clamp down with these hold fast. I actually removed a little bit of material from the underside of where I was going to be bending these just to help them lay a little bit flatter. I'm not sure if you know this, but if you have a branding iron that has a removable handle, often you can put that in your drill press and either heat it or just use the pressure to impress in leather. It works pretty well, except when you leave it on there too long and burn it like I did. But this second one turned out nice because it wasn't quite as hot. These are going on those forged holdfasts from Works by Solo. So take a look at how he made those. I am moving on to the leather work for these. I was folding in a little pocket here so that it would, I could put some magnets in there and it would hold to the hold fast. The magnets I used were not strong enough and even when I got some seriously strong magnets, they didn't do a great job. So 
For the next one, I'm actually just gonna cut that flap off. I'm using my stitching pony that I made a few years ago, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it here. Um, let's get to it. Thanks for watching. I think these accessories that I've added to this workbench will make it even better. Huge thanks to Rockler for supporting my channel and what I do. I'll link below to all of the tools that I used of theirs and other tools and materials as well. I'll link below to Bernie from Works by Solo so you can check out his channel. He makes some great videos. And a big thanks to my buddy Chris from Cowdog Craftworks. He hopped on a call multiple times and I was texting him back and forth. He really helped me learn a lot about these holdfasts. I'll link below to his workbench video that he made not too long ago. If you wanna build this workbench, these are not my plans, they're from Jay Bates. Uh, I'm an affiliate of his and it would help support me if you click my link and go over there and purchase those plans. They're really good, they're very in-depth plans, but I'll link to that below. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you on the next video.